and welcome to Magrathea Builder of Worlds. Now I know if you've been watching these videos already, if you're already a subscriber, then you'll be thinking, hang on, last time you said you'd be doing some model making. And this video definitely isn't going to involve any model making. I'm going to be talking about a bunch of models. I have made a video about model making, I promise, a kind of like as I was going along video. Um, but I can't post it until the model, the book nook, uh, gets to its new owner, which hopefully will be sometime this week. So I'm hoping to post that video by the end of the first week of August. Touch wood. So what I thought I'd do in the meantime is I'd uh, do a second video about some of my burrows and badger scenery, all the scratch built stuff I've been making for this brilliant skirmish game. Um, before we have a look at the scenery, I'm going to wax lyrical for a few moments, if you'll forgive me, about burrows and badgers. This game, I've been a wargamer for uh, 35 plus years um, and I've played all sorts of things, historical, fantasy, science fiction, uh, you name it. Uh, for a while I worked for Games Workshop, I've run clubs, I've run clubs in school, I've played games mostly at home now. Burrows and Badgers, I started playing two years ago and uh, it's safe to say it's the this game that has really got me more than anything else. I'm an old school Warhammer Fantasy Battle player. I loved Necromunda and Mordheim when they came out. I've written lots of my own game systems. A friend and I wrote a game many years ago called Warhammer Ahoy, which is a supplement for that, for Warhammer. Um, I wrote a system, the Saline Rules for Legends of the High Seas. Um, and I've written lots of my own games too. A really cool Victoriana game, End of Empire, also with a different friend of mine, and we never published it, which is stupid because then since then everybody's published Victorian games. Missed that boat. But Burrows and Badgers is a brilliant, brilliant game. If you haven't played it, uh, then you really ought to give it a go. It's a perfect skirmish game as far as I'm concerned. Small groups of figures on a small table played in a short amount of time. Um, uh, easy games to play in an evening. Lovely campaign system. Uh, really suits narrative gaming, which is exactly what I like and encourages all this kind of model making in bits and pieces. The original system um, is written by Michael Lovejoy of Oathsworn Miniatures. Uh, and Oathsworn is only him, I believe, and his good lady Jo. Um, and the original game was published by Osprey. Oathsworn now are publishing their own stuff too. This is the Warren Percy Affair, which is the first supplement um, a campaign system in bits and pieces for it. It's a brilliant game. Give it a go. The figures are charming. They're beautiful. Lovely, lovely models. Great fun to paint. It's a bulldog character from the latest Kickstarter that happened earlier this year, or arrived earlier this year. And Michael is constantly sculpting new figures. Another thing I like about this game is the community. Um, there are loads of Facebook forums. I'm sure you, most people watching this, will be members of many. But I've yet to find one more friendly and more supportive than the Burrows and Badgers uh, group on Facebook. Um, brilliant ideas, lots of extremely talented painters, but absolutely no competition, no snidiness, just very supportive gamers, which is an absolutely great thing in 2020. It's exactly where I want to be. Uh, if I had to stop playing all other war games and only focus on one and not play any other one again, I'd stick to Burrows and Badgers. So having said that, we're going to have a look at some of the scenery. Um, last time we looked at some urban scenery that was out on the gaming table, but I can't get it all out on one table, so I've got some other bits to have a look at too. So we're going to have a look at the larger pieces that we haven't done. Most of these are made uh, with the same materials and techniques that I've uh, used on my other models, um, which is a mixture of materials-wise foam core, balsa wood, and high density polystyrene or XPS or gray polystyrene or gray foam or pink foam or blue foam or what on earth you want to call it nowadays. Um, and we'll have a look at that. I also then tend to use uh, bits out of my extensive bits boxes and other things that I can cobble together. Plus scenic elements from companies like Iron Gate Scenery, um, Front Rank, Front Line, Front Something, I can't remember, um, uh, Mantic, uh, and all sorts of other people too. So we'll see lots of that as we go around this stuff. Right, uh, we're going to have a look at the guild house first of all, which is over here on the workbench. Okay, so here is the guild house. Uh, in, when I play Burrows and Badgers, my campaign is not set in the one that's in the book. Uh, I'm, I'm a soft southerner and from the east coast of England and east Anglia, 
Um, and I like my games to be played uh, in the east of England and around the great city of Lunden. And Lunden, unlike other places, is run by guilds. And this is a guild house, one of the many guild houses in the city. Um, and it's a, a foam core construction more than anything else. Foam core and balsa wood. So let's take a look. Here's the guild house then. Large, biggest building, I think, that I've made really for bars and badgers. But pretty plain. Um, half timber construction based on English medieval market halls and that kind of thing. Um, one day I'm going to get one of those little turntables that turn my models around. In the meantime, you'll have to put it on my hand. It's a, a nice model built all, of course, to come apart. It comes apart in three sections, just like all my other models, really. So the roof comes off to allow access to the inside of the hall. And then the main hall also comes off allowing access underneath to the marketplace so here now we have three parts of the model let's start from the bottom and work up this is the marketplace it goes underneath the guild hall quite a nice thing foam core cardboard construction mostly um the pillars are made from high density polystyrene there are eight of nine of those to support the hall above the market stalls i've uh, made to go on here these are made um for obviously for a market and they're made with with different features so um the fish come from iron gate scenery um i'm pretty sure that table there goes with all of this lot and most of this is from mantic terrain crate one but then there are other boxes and and things and bits of scenic elements from other companies there too so i've got a, uh, a fishmonger and then a vegetable merchant stall and um, this is a, a bread and pastries and that kind of thing um, obviously going to be made going to competition when i get the bakery made the other things i like about this model um, we have large doors with information on it i the the Detail you can go to with small games is great fun. So um, on the Facebook group, there's a set of posters you can print off, which is great fun. I've got it. So I've got posters all the way around the, the downstairs of here. What have we got? We've got adverts for um, pies uh, and products. Uh, there are wanted posters and, and adverts for plays and all sorts of things. What I'd really need to do with these to make this... Uh, more effective, I think, it would be to weather them a little bit. They're all too neat and tidy at the moment. Here as well, we also have a pair of double doors, which can come out. And the double doors are only balsa construction with planking cut into them, scribed into them. Out we come. And they lead to a set of stairs that go up to the main hall. Now, the stairs are always problematic, I find, when you're making models, because... They have to be either be practical or realistic. And in this case, I wanted to go for realistic. So lots of tiny little stairs, not much use for putting big base figures on. Right, let's go upstairs into the main hall. The main guild hall then, it's a pretty standard, simple structure. It's a phone core, five millimeter phone core box, effectively with one separating wall inside. Um, and I want this, this to be a large space where meetings take place and uh, beasts shout at each other and get very angry with each other um, it makes it difficult because it doesn't scale as well to, as some of the other buildings because it's so big um, you can see the guild master here is just a frog he's quite small on the whole thing well, that great big bodyguard of a bulldog though fits a little bit better so uh, there are three kind of parts to this model here we are you can see that quite nicely from the top let's just back up there We've got staircase entrance stairwells at the back. I could put in another wall here if I wanted and have a little office space, but I quite like, or an antechamber, but I quite like the stairs giving you two options. The main hall, dust and dirt in there where I've had smoke effects. Large chimney, large fireplace there. That's made with uh, grey polystyrene, high density polystyrene, all carved. Um, and do you know what i can't remember where the shield and weapon decorations came from that hang on each wall but they look pretty cool the windows are um huge spaces they really need to fill in and i've used my um fly swat technique to make the windows on this model here 
And then we've got the balcony out the front where proclamations are made from. Again, the doors are made to come off nice and easily. So what I like about this model is it takes up quite a lot of space on a table. Sometimes that's awkward when you're playing Burrows and Badgers because you're not playing on a very big table at all, but I tend to use slightly larger tables. It takes up quite a lot of space, but the open market space underneath means that you can see through it and play through. Being able to take the model apart helps a great deal, and you, it helps to delineate streets and that kind of thing. It's also a great place for dodgy deals and uh, uh, seedy fights to take place. It's very cool. Um, on the other hand, the thing that I'm not a huge fan of actually is the general overall size of it because uh, like any large building, even in real life, sometimes you feel absolutely dwarfed by it and it does dwarf all the other buildings that I have. Nevertheless, it's still pretty cool. Right, let's have a look at something else. Next up then uh, was a model that was on that table that uh, we played over the other week and it's this graveyard. Um, nice open piece of terrain this again it helps to make delineate street size at sides and um, areas of uh, the battlefield when you're playing in an urban game which is pretty cool um, this one uh, is reminiscent of ones that you can buy I suppose but I made this entirely from uh, high density polystyrene XPS foam I think it's called sometimes referred to as pink foam certainly was when it first started appearing in um, hobby in the hobby uh, and then went to blue foam and now most of the stuff you can buy is grey in, in the UK so this has got hand scribed stonework on the uh, on all the way around on all the bits of walls and on the staircase and that kind of thing and then uh, the, the graves inside our grave stones are also made from foam the only thing that not really made from xps foam is that statue there right in the middle the statue in the middle of the graveyard is uh, made up from an oath sworn figure um, it's a roman clad tortoise um, he ended up on a statue i think because i didn't really feel think he went particularly well with the rest of the range to be honest uh, some of the earlier figures some of the the, the ones that aren't a british fauna Look, I thought looked a bit out of place and I wasn't really feeling the love for painting him so I decided it would be cool if he was a, a throwback to ancient times and I turned him into a statue. He's sitting on a plinth that um, you can get from Oathsworn. I think that's uh, actually made by Sarissa. It's a laser cut MDF thing. I added the fleur-de-lis. The fleur-de-lis are pin badges. I bought a whole load because uh, I can through my work, which is pretty cool. The tree is... Um, my favourite type of trees that I can get. I could make trees myself, but this is so damn fiddly. Um, and there are some really good ones out there. Uh, these trees are made by a company called The Last Valley. Uh, uh, they're really smashing. Oops. They are made from real bits of wood. And then the foliage, I believe, is horsetail hair. And um, then loads and loads of flock on them. Uh, there are probably more realistic looking trees but to be quite honest i uh, i really quite like these they're very effective now the other thing that's worth pointing out with this is the fact that this graveyard so far has been represents our uh, earlier boroughs and badgers campaign we played and i've still got space for more you'll notice that um on the gravestones it does actually have names of characters this one over here says bodkin and um that one over the back there says nipper uh fell from high and then i think we've got one here we've got two in fact this one over here for blades and bill his tweed all four of those characters are actually characters that have actually died completely died in our burrows and badgers campaign and i've left the other graves with possible spaces to add headstones to here and here and over the back so if we have any other casualties that occur during a campaign we're going to add them to the graveyard just got a cool way of recording the games we play okay we've got to back up a little bit to get this whole model into the shot to start off with this is one of my favorite urban buildings that i've made so far um apart from anything else it's a, a composite of bought pieces and pieces that I've made and bits that I've cobbled together. So it's quite satisfying from that point of view. This is the East Gate Watch House uh, near the gate, East Gate of the City of London um, and is uh, one of 
the buildings that I've built for uh, one of my war bands. I kind of like when I've got a war band that we've got going in in a campaign. I like the idea of them having their own place. The campaign system has a den allotted to a war band, um, and I like to build the dens or have buildings associated with particular war bands. And this one is associated with a war band called the Eastgate Watch, led by Sir Pipkin Broom. So this is Sir Pipkin Broom. He's one of the earliest figures that I bought for Burrows and Bradges. Fantastic squirrel with loads of heavy armour and a pole arm. Very dangerous chap. And uh, yes, this is his watch house where his war band are based. So this one comes apart like all my other buildings. So we'll have a look at this a bit at a time. Start from the bottom, go to the top. So again, like all my other Barrows and Badgers models, this model comes apart to allow access to all parts of the model. Um, this model separates into five separate pieces that stack up, look pretty cool on the table. I like to have some taller models on a wargaming table just to kind of like give a bit more realism um, and it helps draw the eye to one place or another. But we're gonna have a look at the model, as I said, from the base up. So we're gonna start here with the very ground floor. So the ground floor of this model, as you can see, is over three inches tall, eight centimetres tall. That's mostly because I tend to see this as this is where the jail cells are um, and storerooms. And they've got to be big enough to accommodate the massive figures, um, just in case one of them ends up in prison. And a massive figure in this game, like the bulldog we had a look at earlier. We have a look at him there. He is two inches or so at least tall. So from that point of view, on his base... If he ends up in prison, you've got to have enough room for him. Uh, this bit of the model is made completely from um, high-density polystyrene again. It was actually made in two bits. First of all, uh, there was a, a two, I had some two-inch thick polystyrene, and then I put another layer, an inch layer of polystyrene on it as well. It has... Windows cutting for the jail cell. One here at the bottom again at the set of realistic steps rather than practical steps. And then two more windows over here to allow access into the bottom of the model. Now, all we've got here is very much a square room with a removable set of metal bars so it can be a storeroom if I like, or it can become a jail cell easily by sticking those in. And then we can have a jail cell that we can have characters placed within, kept inside. And of course, all of these things are designed so you can then sit and stare at the poor miscreant through the windows, which is something that I take a lot of pleasure in doing. It's great fun. Right. It's uh, the base of the model then. It's based to match pretty much everything else I do. So... Um, I uh, use small clusters of tiny bits of slate and bits and pieces from my basin box um, and coral sand. Um, and then sometimes if I'm going for paving slabs, that will be cut from cardboard. Everything's painted. I tend to use Citadel paint, so everything's painted with a, a Morn Fang Brown base and then dry brushed with XV88 and a Morgast bone and your Shabti bone on the top um, and then flocks. And I use tend to use quite a few clumps of um, static clumps stuff uh grass from different scenic companies i tend to go to model railway shops um and again i use moss and uh this is javis ivy this stuff's really cool i like to see it's available in different colors um and uh the leaves are actual proper little ivy leaves which are really nice they go on really nicely so from that point of view um they look very effective and then to give light at night time we have a brazier here at the top uh, of the steps that's uh, a brazier from a mantic the romantic terrain crate although uh, as i said previously i tend to replace the flimsy plastic with something harder here this is a, a balustrade or a, a piece of staircase from a doll's house which works nicely uh there's also a set of removable stocks or pillory should i say uh that can be put at the top of the plate of the stairs for punishments <laughs> right moving on then so let's move that out of the way um the first floor has a, a balcony surround it's got one doorway in now it doesn't stand up very well i'll show you the reason for why in a moment uh has a fleur-de-lis which is the mark the royal mark um and then inside um it has balsa wood floors 
that are scribed and uh, you can see a trap door down to the uh, cells there and what i haven't done is put any stairs or ladders inside the model here because they'll just get in the way so we, we use that as an abstract um it's got a balcony around the outside uh of the second floor uh to enable characters to go outside and shoot and keep watching that kind of thing which means you don't always have to take the model apart to get access to it you can see that um the key model makers will notice that this is made uh from citadel miniatures games workshops a second mighty fortress kit this is a tower that i had kicking around i'll have a look at another at what i've done with another bunch of stuff there and i've added all sorts of bits and pieces to it um it's got all sorts of gooey stuff running down the walls. Um, it's got a nice, simple, straightforward bit of, of model making here that sits neatly on the ground floor. Slot together, pretty tight. And now we can start to play around with the rest of the model. Okay, so second floor then. This is um, where we got with the first floor I tend to see is a storage room and entrance area. This then is the first part of the living quarters for the Eastgate watch. There's a chair lying down the floor there. Scenery mostly from Mantic, and I've now started to add to the outside of my tower um, and the inside a polystyrene chimney and fireplace. Um, I've also cut into this model here. Let's just take out those scenic elements. Windows that have got uh, extra window bits uh, from a Citadel piece of, uh, a Games Workshop piece of scenery that uh, I no longer have, but I kept the windows because they're pretty cool. They're nice little features there. Give us windows in into the model, and you can see the base of the chimney that's fitted on that will carry on up the model. So again, trap door cut in, but no stairs or ladder. That's deliberate. This has got two doors, so characters can come in and out onto the balcony in two places next floor so what's that ground floor first floor second floor third floor or if you're across the pond in the states that's first floor second floor third floor fourth floor uh, but we're not we're in the uk so this is the third floor this is the top of the citadel tower or the workshop tower but i've added wooden beams all the way around the top and i've turned the crenellations into windows uh, lead lined windows made with uh fly swap lead lining um and we can see here, this has got the stone floor there, a couple of mantic beds in there for the, the guards are on watch, and another fireplace with that chimney that is now following up the back of the model. So that will sit nicely on top. Get that out of the way. And then the roof again. Look, you can still see the breakfast cereal that it was made out of. Um, and the foam core construction in there. I haven't even bothered painting the inside of that. Chimney on the outside. Nicely tiled roof, same gable profile that we've got everywhere else on all the other models, um, which means that the whole thing ties in very nicely with all the other models uh, on my table. Uh, this then sits nicely on the top. And we have our completed model from ground. Now it's worth pointing out that some of these bits, this one does stand up quite well. Some of the bits of the model don't stand up very well because I've got this odd addition on the bottom of some of these. And this is a crude attempt to house a flickering light LED that I can put into the model so it will sit and light up uh, the model or the floor below. Um, so when you're looking through the windows, it lights up, which kind of works. Um, but I'm becoming... So let's just put that on there. Let's put my money where my mouth is. It'll be too light for us to see in here today. We can see that light through there glittering away. Um, but what I'm, I'm starting to do now is experiment more with LEDs uh, and lighting my scenery. So they're going to change because I'm flicking over to very simple um, coin holding LED setups that I'm going to have a look at in another video. I'm going to look at lighting up our models. So that's the guard, the watchtower. Let's go and find something else. Something that doesn't match all the other bits of scenery. Here we go. So this model is built deliberately to not look like all the other urban scenery. I wanted this to look old and different so it stands out on a table. This is a temple, a holy shrine, 
Holy Glade, dedicated to one of the Burrows and Badgers gods known as the Green Mother. And uh, what I wanted this to be um, was a green space inside a busy, busy town. So we'll have a close look at this. This model is mostly made, again, from identity polystyrene, which has been carved and sculpted, scribed for all the stonework and the symbol of the Green Mother, uh, or inside and out. It's octagonal in shape, and the octagon actually came from uh, happened for two reasons. First of all, I, I drew uh, a design, the design for, this, for model. this model originally was round. Um, it was going to be a, a round thing and uh, what I had in mind, but actually I decided that it was an awful lot of work uh, making all of that out of high-density polystyrene, and I was going to get a huge amount of wastage as well. So I kind of backed off for the time being, and I hadn't worked out what the top of it was really going to look like, and then a friend of mine pointed me in the direction of this Sarissa Elven piece of scenery, a pavilion, which I totally haven't used all of it, but it kind of gave me the shape I wanted, uh, and that was an octagon. So this model then became octagonal. The idea of this model is that there was an ancient, revered tree growing a long time before the city was built. And uh, the city was built up, and it reached this tree, and the worshippers of the Green Mother decided they had to protect the tree and the holy glade so they built a wall and enclosed the holy glade to keep it safe from the outside so again this model comes apart there's no surprise there at all um and in this case it's in two pieces so it's got the main temple body and then it's got this roof section with the pavilion on top quite a tight fit taking off the roof but i wanted that to be there i wanted it to be pretty snug and then we can see inside. Now, I've had a number of controversial conversations with people about this model already uh, because many folk actually really like it without the roof. I, I'm in two minds. I love the glade. Here we can see the holy glade. Let's just come up above it a little. Uh, there we are. The holy glade is made with uh, a Citadel uh, Games Workshop, uh, Sylvaneth forest tree thing risen up on a mound and you can see there it's got uh there are um, all sorts of other plants of foliage around about the place uh leaves and the like ivy growing around the back in the back end of this we've got a little alcove over here where holy things can be kept a set of stairs that lead up onto the roof symbol of the green mother crudely because i did it carved into the back wall and a second archway, a little exit over the back there for the priest to make a quick exit if it all goes horribly wrong. I really, really like this model. It's a nice space, um, a great place for action to take place in the middle or towards the end of a story. And like I said, um, a number of people, including Michael Lovejoy, the, the writer of Burrows and Badgers, kind of said he preferred it with the roof off. There are a couple of reasons why I like the roof. First of all, I like the roof because... The roof was part of the original plan, and here it is. Let's just move the shrine to one side. Here's the roof. The roof is an octagon made of uh, a five mil foam core, and it's got this Sarissa Elven pavilion on it. But the only other reasons why I like it is that I've got all this kind of foliage growing underneath and stalactites. I wanted this to be kind of like made of limestone, and and I liked the idea of these this thing having been here so long. There were stalactites growing on the inside. And when you look into the model through the doorways, if you look carefully, it's pretty cool because you can see the stalactites over the back. What I love about Burrows and Badgers and the models that I'm making for this actually are the cool photographs you can take with these things. The atmospheric and moody photos. Michael Lovejoy's figures are sculpted in such a way every figure tells a story. And I try to make scenery that kind of complements that. Um, and I hope you think it does. But around the back, again, each archway and way in. You want to get down on a table level and look into these things and take photographs. I absolutely love this model. Um, it's really big. Uh, it's a bit of a pain in the neck. It's not going to feature on many of my gaming tables, but it's it's a smashing thing. Uh, and I'm very pleased with it from a design point of view. It really kind of like pushed me some way 
compared to the others that become kind of not run the mill because I really enjoy making them. But this one looks completely different. Um, and it was a, a challenge for me to make as I'm starting to develop my use of uh, polystyrene and foam and how I'm cutting it and working with it as well. So from that point of view, I, uh, I'm dead chuffed with this. Happy with that one. That's all of my Burrows and Badgers urban terrain, I think. Um, all the houses and shops are bits and pieces and some of the bigger pieces too. I hope you enjoyed that kind of trip around the ancient it's city of Nangles. If you go to my Facebook page, Magrathea Builder of Worlds, at Magrathea Models, there are albums on there for pretty much the builds of all of these uh, bits of scenery showing how they were done. Uh, a bit at a time to give you a kind of step by step there are no videos for the constructions of those but there are pretty fully detailed albums so um, please do subscribe to this channel uh, if you've enjoyed this video you want to have a look at some of my other stuff I'm going to work my way through all sorts of bits and pieces um, the marsh scenery the uh, countryside the rural scenery for B&B we'll look at 40 millimeter pirate stuff we'll have a look at 28 millimeter Victoriana and there are all sorts of bits and pieces in those crates that I showed you earlier. So we'll have a lot of fun unpacking those. I promise next time, fingers crossed, um, we should actually have some model making going on in the video. But until then, thanks for joining me at Magrathea Builder Worlds. Subscribe, leave comments below, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and I'll see you soon. Bye bye.